What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. I'm Chris. In this episode, we are going to go right now to get tires put on the wheels for the BRZ. We're going to put the wheels and tires on the BRZ, see how that looks, and then we're going to paint the engine bay of the BRZ. What color? I don't know yet. Stay tuned. So if you guys remember like a while back, I did talk about how I was frustrated with the prices of tire mounting and a couple of you guys have actually emailed me and offered tire mounting service. Thank you guys so much uh, for doing that. For now though, I'm heading out to the uh, the ghetto again. Uh, it's not really ghetto, I should stop saying that. I don't know, it's, it's kind of hood. There's a car on, okay. Anyways, um, we're getting, uh, we're going over to the good old Double J. I love these guys and they're gonna throw the tires on these wheels for us real quick while I go to the bank to pay for a car that I just bought. See, if I get into drifting, I can I can hold four sets of burners back here. Not sets, four single burners, two sets. Yee! Starting to love this place, man. 15 bucks a wheel, mounted in balance, just in, out, I'm done, on my way to the bank. You guys don't care at all. I'll, I'll see you back in the shop when I got the wheels done. All right, back in the shop and we got our wheels and tires. So this one in the front is the nine and a half and it's running the um, Federal RSR. And uh, that's a nice, just heavy duty, grippy tire. So we can run that in the front. And then these are basically just burners in the back. This is a uh, Nanking cheap China uh, tire that we will turn into smoke. And that's on the uh, 10 and a halfs. So we got the car set up here um, and we have a mess as always, but um, on the front we're running like, I, I think that's a one inch spacer in the back, it's probably a two. So I have other spacers, we have a lot of other options, I have some that are as small as like 15 mil. Um, so we, we have plenty of options. For right now though, what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put the wheels on the car on all four and we'll set it down, we'll see how it looks and then if we want to change it, uh, we'll lift it back up and change it from there. Let's look at the back first. So the back uh, looks like it's it's like it's pretty it's pretty flush. A little bit of poke out there. Uh, I think this two incher will work. If we went into one inch, uh, it would bring it in quite a bit more. And the only thing I'm worried about is right under here is where the waterproofing starts. So if this thing bounces even just a little bit, it'll hit the waterproofing. But it'll just make like light scrape sound. It'll clear the fender though. So. I don't know. I think I'll probably drive that way for a while. We have coilover suspension coming, so I can kind of stiffen that up too back there a little bit. So I'm not gonna make take any action on that for a little bit. And then in the front here, I didn't want to put this fender on because it's a mess. So I put this fender on and uh, I realized that without an engine, uh, it's really, really high because um, there's not enough weight on the car. So, but this is what it looks like. And uh, from the side angle, we're looking pretty good. It's, it's a close one. Um, and uh, I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be all clear. But one thing that we could do is I could take the 15 millimeter spacer and put that here and that'll move it in more. And then I could take this one inch spacer and bring it back there and that would move that in more. So basically right now we're running kind of on the maximum wide. And as we drive it, if we have issues, we'll just swap out our spacers for the smaller set of spacers. And that'll bring everything in basically like one inch. Which should be cool. So uh, that's it. Wheels are looking great, tires look great. I'm very, very excited. It's time to move on to the engine bay. Before I jump into cleaning the engine bay, paint prepping it, I actually, I wanna move the hydraulic lift underneath this car and keep it over here for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that quick jack and bring it over here and install it on this car. Probably bring it up a couple more inches to get a little bit uh, better height on the car and then we'll get started. I don't know if it's just getting the wheels and tires on here, but it's starting to look pretty cool. I'm really, I'm digging it. I don't know what's really even changed. I guess it's the wheels and tires. Having some meat on here makes it look more like the real deal. Uh, I got the car up a little bit. This is more of a comfortable level to work at. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna be using Prep All uh, as a cleaning solution and rags and just go through everything uh, as deeply as I can and clean all the grease and gunk and everything off of the paint to get it ready for more paint. All right, I 
got this left side all cleaned up and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the left, give that time to dry, then come over and paint the right, and then I'll do the left again and then the right again. Two coats on everything and go with black. Um, sorry to those that wanted me to do it red. I was pretty amped on doing it red in the beginning, but um, I think it's gonna look better color wise. I think the, the actual design of the car will look better. Uh, black engine bay, red valve cover, which we will paint later today. Um, but another thing is, is I'm trying to be smart about this and I don't um, have a lot of time to clean a lot of my cars. Like I have 10 cars. If it took me an hour to clean each car, it'd take me almost two days to clean all my cars. So the engine bay will probably get a little bit dirty. I'd rather have it black and a little bit of dirty than like this really, really elegant looking red color and it's dirty then it just looks like, you know, I gave up. So uh, I'm going to go with black and, uh, and red on the valve cover. Uh, for that, I'm just going to use spray paint rather than using um, like the full on uh, painter's paint. This stuff doesn't get like, you know, uh, engine bay doesn't take too much abuse really. Mine might take a little bit more than normal with the engine coming in and out and stuff like that, but it should be fine. So I think... Uh, uh, Rust-Oleum is the best spray paint that I know of, um, so I'm going to use Rust-Oleum and we're going to go with a gloss black on this one and just see how it comes out. This is kind of actually a satin uh, blue color, uh, so I thought about going satin black, but we'll go gloss black and I hope I'm not wrong on, this, on, on making this call. Maybe I should go satin black. I'm going to test spray some satin and some gloss and see which one I like best. I painted gloss here and satin here, and you really can't tell the difference too much anyways. So I'm just gonna move forward with the gloss. That way it saves a trip down to the store anyways. Uh, so it's time to start painting. There's just a couple more things I'm gonna tape off around here. And then uh, I'm gonna use some poster board as kind of a blocker, as like a card, so I don't overspray too much stuff. The cool thing about spray paint is you can kind of like pinpoint little areas that you want to spray into and you don't you won't have as much overspray it's a little bit more easily controlled than like a really high uh, psi detail gun or something like that so uh, we're ready to go let's get this half painted First coat of the black went on all right, so I'm doing I'm doing kind of the outside as well to try and clean that up. When we do the door jams, those will be legit painted um, when we when we work on improving that. Because if you guys remember, we didn't do the inside of the trunk or the door jams, so those those will be done uh, later. But I kind of wanted to get black going back in that way, and the rest of the skeleton and the wheel well, so there's no blue hiding out anywhere. Just basically getting rid of all the blue. Um, I went down the transmission tunnel a little ways. When we do more work in the transmission tunnel, I'll get up there and spray the rest of that. Uh, but that pocket came out pretty nicely, and I uh, didn't get any overspray anywhere that I didn't want to, so that was a big thing. Uh, so that's coat number one. And then, uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and clean um, this side. Struggle a lot with some of the different things that are plugged in and, and stuff here and uh, clean everything up and give it a good spray. taped up and prepared. This one's going to be a lot more tricky because there's a lot of stuff I have to work around, but I will do my best and uh, let's get it sprayed up. And then right after I spray this, I'm going to go over to the other side and spray the um, second coat on the other side. All right, well it's nice and shiny and black. That's what we were going for. Looks pretty good. There's some dust and some stuff. You know, it's it's not super, like these surfaces are not the most uh, smooth surfaces to start with. But the ones that started smooth, like in that back corner and stuff like that, are nice and nice and glossy. And uh, it's good, it's good for a quick job. I mean, that's, that's about what I wanted. That's the look I was going for. And I'm glad I didn't break the bank and spend $400 on paint or anything else like that. Um, you know, it's not a show car guys. I drive my cars. I try and drive them really hard and I, to be very honest, don't take very good care of them. So I didn't want to spend like 20 or 30 hours like, like doing all this stuff. 
So the next thing that we get to do is going to be pretty cool. So we're going to paint the valve cover to the engine the uh, red color to match the wheels. So I'm going to get that all set up. As silly as this may look, I feel like this box is actually a good height and a good way to kind of hold on to this. So the next thing I got to do uh, is clean it up. So I'm going to use the prep ball again, clean it up, and then I'm going to give it a real nice light sanding with some uh, 600 grit sandpaper all around just to make sure our paint sticks really well under here. I just finished the wax and grease remover on this and, uh, and, and the sanding. So we did the sanding with 600 grit. It's looking good. It's nice and smooth. And then I did uh, two full passes with the wax and grease remover. The thing that I've been learning the more and more I've been painting is that, that step right there, the wax and grease remover, is the one thing that you cannot underestimate um, on a paint job, especially something that's going to be as detailed as this. Uh, just do that one, two, three, maybe four times. Uh, it's really, really important so you don't have contaminants still on your piece. So the next thing we got to do is add wax, <laughs> which is so stupid. But um, all these detail pieces in here with the letters getting down to the really detailed part of the letters and the Toyota symbol, um, if I were to try and put masking tape on that and cut it out, there's no way it would work. One hack that you can do um, is you put chapstick on these pieces. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a layer of chapstick on just the face of this stuff, so just the top face of this. The paint won't be able to stick to the chapstick. So once our paint has dried, I'll be able to wipe the chapstick off and it should wipe the paint off. If it doesn't, I won't be too upset because the alternate is that we just have to paint over the letters and you know, you have the same color letters. Um, but for right now, I'm pretty sure this will work. Other people have said it works. I want to keep this like, you know, stock lettering looking, even though actually, I don't know, I'd probably rather have it black, but anyways, um, so light coat of chapstick, heavy coat of chapstick, just on the face of this chrome lettering. All right, with the chapstick carefully applied, it's now time to go ahead and mix up the paint and then I will cut, uh, wipe this down with a tack rag one more time and then we're gonna spray our red base coat. Oh, uh, just so you guys know, the wheels are, were painted with a, with a candy, which means that you take a tinted clear coat and you do multiple, multiple coats until you get that nice colored effect. Um, because I bought this paint planning to do the engine bay and that would be very, very hard to do with a candy, what we got was a base coat base coat clear coat that is very very similar color I mean it's like basically an exact match of the color to the color that uh, the wheels basically had when they were dried and all finished up so this is gonna match but it's painted with a different technique we're not painting it with a candy technique we're just painting it with a two-stage paint technique Here we are with our engine cover. It's looking pretty good. Got a nice, smooth, kind of clean, glossy finish. A couple tiny little dust particles in there, but nothing too much to worry about. Now, it doesn't match the wheels. Let me grab a wheel. Okay, here's a wheel side by side, and you can see that the wheel has a little bit more depth in the color range, but at the highlight of it, they look very, very similar. Uh, I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera. But uh, I, I'm pretty happy with it. If, if you're just looking at both of them uh, from a side angle or something like that, uh, it's, it's as close as we were probably going to get. The wheel has more depth because of the candy being sprayed with candy. And uh, yeah, so I couldn't, I couldn't actually even get the candy stuff. So for, for doing a two stage versus the candy, I think this is pretty cool. I want to try and uh, mock this up in the engine bay real quick. So I'm going to see if I can kind of move this box or move stuff around and get it in the engine bay so I can see what it looks like. There we go. I think that's a pretty nice color combo right there. I think it, it, it pops, pops off and it looks well and it's gonna match the wheels well. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, that's a wrap on this episode. Before we go though, I wanna talk a little bit about movement watches. I've been working with movement watches a little bit. They sent me this new watch today actually. Uh, if you check that out, I don't, the camera's not gonna, oh, there it goes. Uh, I really like this watch, it's pretty cool. 
Um, they sent me this watch to try out and I, I like movement because their company is founded on a philosophy that I can really, really understand. It's very close to the Beauty for Build philosophy. Uh, two guys got together and they said, you know what, watches are overpriced, they're too expensive. I think we can build our own for better and keep the cost down and make it cheaper. Does that ring a bell of what we do around here? And those two guys started Movement Watches and, uh, and the proof is in the pudding. They make a good quality watch and they are much cheaper than the competitors. So uh, if you guys are interested, head over to Movement. They have tons of different styles and designs and uh, it's mvmtwatches.com is the URL. I'll put a link in the description. Um, if you go check them out, you find something you like, use code BUILD10 and that'll get you 10% off um, any of your purchases. Uh, on that site. So code BUILD10 guys. Check it out. Get yourself a new watch for summer or something like that. I always like having a nice watch on, although I do kill a lot of watches while working here in the shop, but I always like having a nice watch because sometimes my clothes are crap. But if you're wearing a nice watch, it lets people know. It's like I got, I had some money at one point. So check it out. Uh, BUILD10 is the code mvmtwatches.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I think the black and the red did turn out nicely and, uh, and I'm happy with it. Uh, in the next episode, we're gonna throw the engine back in and uh, keep moving along. We got the intercooler to install. We got the radiator to install. Maybe just throw the whole front of the car back together. I don't know. Fun stuff. The next episode is gonna be more BRZ related goodness. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like Beast for Build, you like what we do, head over to beastforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop, pick yourself up any of the things that you see around me, the hats, the key tags, the banners. Uh, I mentioned in the last episode that the, <laughs> we had the new hats and then I forgot to put them in the store. So those are in the store now. If you want a black curved bill hat, those are in the store now. I think I, I label them as a baseball style hat. Beast for Build baseball cap. Find that there. And also, if you want to find us in more places, Beast for Build on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace! <laughs>